Hey, welcome back. So this episode is going to be getting the HTML in order and right down to it will be the header element and contained in this will be everything we're going to work with. So I'm going to reference a file just to kind of streamline this because it is basic HTML. Um, some of these styles are going to be, uh, I guess, componentized just for the sake of making everything easier to read. Um, I was going to do this with atomic styles at first, but then I saw how many I needed and needed to reach for for this, and it was getting redick. So, um, yes, I said that. So here, I'm going to make some classes. If they don't make sense, hopefully they will as I add them, but here we go. So I'm going to make a, a traditional header element. We're going to have a nav with a class of primary. And then I like to pref or suffix... Um, my class names that I target with JS often with dash JS, just so I know what's what. Nav's going to have a mobile menu too, so this is going to be a responsive. So I'm going to have a toggle for that that's similar to something you'd see on Bootstrap if you've used that, which a lot of people have. And there's no reason you, you can't just use Bootstrap for something like this, but to me, it's it's there's something about rolling your own leaner approach that works or feels better, I don't know, even more customizable. And I like that about it. Make some space here, because there's gonna be an SVG as our logo. I'm gonna use my Web Crunch logo just as a placeholder. You can use your own if you want. Just make sure it's an SVG, because some of this CSS is gonna to pertain to it. In fact, this is gonna be ridiculous to type, so I'm gonna find, do that with, it's this jar, jar build code here. So let me grab this at least. And paste it between the a tag all right great so that sets the stage for our logo we're gonna have a button and you typically want to use a button here because it's more uh, accessible so you'll see on um, bootstrap for example they do that and that's for a variety of reasons but a button you can actually set um, screen reader type stuff or toggle type things that make more sense to people that might have disabilities and whatnot. So we're gonna add some data attributes on these. One's gonna be toggle, and it's just gonna be called toggle. Uh, we're gonna have data target, and we're gonna pass in an ID that's gonna be called nav content, which is gonna be a div we create below this that we're gonna target when we actually hit the button to drop the menu. So um, on top of that, we have area controls or aria, however you want to say that. And this is going to be the same name, content, and area expanded false. So you might see the similar things from Bootstrap because I did take some inspiration from this actual toggle from them. Uh, I think it's Pretty well done. So, um, from the other project right here, feel free to grab it from the repo if you're following along. So, below that, we're going to have some more. Uh, that's actually going to close this div. So, we're done with that div in particular. And below that, we're going to have our collapsed portion of the nav. So, this will be what toggles. So I'm going to call it nav collapse. And then we're going to pass that ID we referenced earlier up here, that nav content. So that's how we target it. So we create this giant div for that. And while I'm at it, I'm going to move myself up here. And we're going to have two navs classes in between. One's going to have nav end and nav start. So one's going to be start and one end. And that's Flexbox doing its job. It's more or less just justifying which way the line items would actually float on the menu. And then I wanted to apply styles or have at least support for a typical link in the uh, browser and the menu, I mean, and we're going to give it some button classes just to have them. 
and we call this link left. Cool. And then, of course, you can't do a menu without a drop down. <laughs> I typically try to avoid drop downs, um, they're just really not necessary in most cases. And especially the mega menu stuff, like unless you're Amazon, you don't need that. All right, so let's create a link here. This is just gonna be a target, so we don't want it to link to anything. You could make it link to something if you wanted, but that's kind of tricky. Um, so I'm gonna call it drop down menu button. And it's gonna have another button class, oops, class button, button XS, which is extra small button drop down. So our button drop downs are gonna have a little uh, chevron on the right that kind of indicates that it is a drop down. So that's kind of what I wanna go for. And I want to, this to be have a roll of a button. So you can kind of dictate an actual hyperlink to be roll of a button as opposed to just a button in its place. Since buttons are kind of hard to style. This is gonna target our actual menu to drop. So below that is the actual under um, unordered list. So I'll use Emmet to do some tricks here. So this I'm gonna call drop down menu and I'm gonna make that scalable and such. I could make a menu anywhere and this will target that typical thing. Hidden hides these by default and we'll eventually show that with JavaScript once we get to it. Uh, so you'll have to forgive me if we're moving a little slow to get to that point. I know that's kind of the meat and potatoes. So we're going to label this what we call the ID up here just to kind of give it some uh, accessibility. And then we're going to have three LIs. So we can do th LI times three and then do a class of drop down item. And Emmet hates me. So I guess we can't do that. Let's do this. If we could do that. There we go. Did it backwards. And we need an A tag in each. I should have done this. So that's a typical drop down button that we're going to use. And then the next part is going to be the end nav. And we're basically going to duplicate what we have there. Actually, just going to copy and paste this, replace this, but change it to nav end. And this will be link right. And drop down right. So I want drop downs that are both left align and right align based on their location on the menu. I'm, only, I'm basically not gonna be that smart with it, but actually just tell it, hey, be a drop down to the right as opposed to the left with a class. So this one's gonna have a few more links. Um, our link right's actually gonna appear under the drop down, and it's gonna be a link called link left actually, or excuse me, link right. And then we're gonna have another drop down. And in that we need our target. So we'll do another anchor link. This is gonna have an actual avatar as our anchor link. So why don't I grab from the other project that part because it's quite a long URL. In this, the actual target's gonna be my actual image, my profile image, as you saw on that demo. But we're gonna target the, it with CSS. I'm pulling for, straight from Gravatar's API, I guess you could say. They have a typical link, secure.gravatar.com slash avatar slash your actual MD5 ID or whatever it is there. So you can find that if you go to your Gravatar profile. And uh, we'll do an unordered list. It's gonna have the same classes. So drop down menu, Drop down, I'm gonna call this one drop down account since it's kind of special. It's just got that account stuff in it. So right and hidden. So that here's how we're gonna target a drop down to be right aligned just by giving it a class. And then we'll have our list items. And I just call these settings and account or account settings and sign out. It's like something you'd see on an actual app. 
Um, like I said, I had a ton more classes in here when I was trying the functional style approach, but it was getting pretty hairy and ugly. So that's just kind of the result of it in this case. So as is, it's not going to look great because there's no styles yet, but here's the actual code in place. And we've got all of our actual markup going on. So that's great. Uh, one thing we're going to need is to link to our JavaScript, which will basically do all the toggling and stuff we need for dropdowns and our mobile app. At this point, I don't have the image for the dropdowns, so I'm going to add that by referencing the other profile or other project. It's just an SVG. I'm going to call it dropdown arrow in our images directory. So we'll go back up to that, add a new file, dropdown arrow .svg paste that in and that should be it for that. So next we need to add our CSS and get that going. It's going to be actually SAS that compiles down. So I think I'll stop there. I'll make this probably four parts kind of advocate doing shorter videos. They're easier to digest, I think. So hopefully that helps with you guys. Um, so yeah, so that the next part, let's tackle the CSS and make this thing look like an actual menu. So we'll get cracking on that next Peace.